Hello and welcome to the video. In this video we're going to be covering the basics of object-oriented programming. Object-oriented programming is a way to represent data and functionality in an encapsulated way. Object-oriented programming was originally devised in order to make it easier to represent real-world objects in code. In traditional object-oriented pro programming there are two key features of an object. Objects contain state or the current data and information that describes the object, and functionality, which is actions or changes that the object can make to itself or the outside world. Some theoretical examples of objects might be a dog, which might have a state that includes things like name, color, breed, and size, and might have functionality such as bark, dig, and lick. We can also represent more abstract things, such as an object that deals with the editing of strings. We can have a state that includes attributes like maximum length, the string being edited, and a list of banned words. We can then have functionality that includes converting our string to title case, checking and removing banned words, and cutting our string down to the maximum length. The most important thing to remember about an object is that it contains data and functionality that are related. We can demonstrate an object quickly. Here we set the name, color, breathe. and size. Next we'll set some functions. To set a function for an object we simply use the key as the name of the function and then define the function block by calling function with the parentheses. We don't need the name of the function following the function keyword in this case, as the key serves as the function name for us. To call our object's functions, we simply call the object and access the function like it's any other value, except that we need to include the parentheses like we would calling a function. We can now see that bark is console logged, just like the function said. Some objects might not have data and some might not have functions. As long as the data or the functions within the object are related, in some way, it should be fine. Another key concept in object-oriented programming is interface versus implementation. This has to do with the functions of the object. The interface is the function's signature. The signature is the name, in this case, bark, and the parameters. In this case, it has no parameters. We can add a variable called type of bark. Now, the signature of the bark function would be bark as the name, and type of bark as the parameters. The implementation is what the function is actually doing under the hood. In this case, it is console logging the string bark. When using objects in your code, you only want to concern yourself with the interface and what the function returns. In order to maintain clean code, you should not concern yourself with how the function is implemented. This should be invisible to anything using the function except the object itself. This may be a little bit confusing now, but in the future, this will become more clear. Just keep it in the back of your mind. Next, we'll talk about APIs. API stands for Application Programming Interface. These are interfaces written into software to be used by other programmers to interact with the code. Let's say, for example, that you have a library of code that helps you play videos, and you want to use this code on your website. You would have to use the API provided by the library, which may have functions like load video, play video, and skip ahead 10 seconds. This API makes it easy to interact with the technology created by other people. 
for the dog object that we've created, its API is the bark function. In class, you'll hear a lot about REST APIs. REST APIs are the same idea. They just allow you to interact with other people's code. Except rather than using functions, they use URLs, as they are a way to interact with web applications. Rather than calling, say, a bark function, you would simply go to a www.example.com forward slash bark and set it an HTTP method. You'll learn about these in class. Finally, I'd like to cover passing by value and passing by reference. When you send data through a function via its parameters, there are two ways in which it can be passed. By value or by reference. Passing data by value means that inside of the function, only the value of the data is imported, meaning that the data is essentially copied for use inside of the function. Passing by reference, on the other hand, means that the parameter being passed in only points to the original data. If you pass in data to a function by reference and change it in some way, the original piece of data is affected too. This is important to keep in mind because if you pass something by reference and are expecting the original not to be changed in any way, you may encounter errors. Whether or not a certain type is passed by value or by reference is up to the programming language you're using. You'll have to do additional research to find out whether this is the case. Let's make a function to demonstrate what I mean. Here, we pass in a number, y, and add 5 to y. We'll console log the value of y. Let's define a variable outside of the function called y and set it to 5. Call function x with y, and then console log y outside of the function. As you can see, y inside of the function is set to 10, but y outside of the function is still 5. Now, if y was an object, and it had values of name and number, and in here, we say y number equals y number plus 5. We can see that num outside of the function and num inside of the function become the same. This is because objects in JavaScript are passed in by reference. Anything that we do inside of a function to an object is translated to the, the object that we originally passed in. The object is not copied. Compare that with the number that we passed in earlier. That was passed in by value. The original number did not change. Only the number inside of the function changed. Keep this in mind when you're writing your programs, as it can cause hard to debug errors. Thank you, and that concludes Objects, APIs, and Interfaces.